what up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of cyber thriller Dark Web Cicada 3301 arriving on digital and on demand March 12th and on Blu-ray DVD March 16th, I'm here talking with the stars of this new film, Connor Leslie and Alan Richson. Alan also directed this film. How are you, Alan and Connor? Good, how are you? Very well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Good, thank you for taking the time. Alan, let me start with you. Congratulations uh, on this feature directorial debut. Um, I understand that the story is based on, uh, or loosely based, or inspired by the internet puzzle uh, less than a decade ago. Take me back to when that internet puzzle captivated the public. Why do you think it was so fascinating, and were you part of the folks who were trying to solve it? Um, I don't think I was smart enough to solve a Cicada 3301 puzzle, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's basically an international scavenger hunt for geniuses that started um, in 2012. Um, it, it was January 2012. It, it took a, a couple of months for, for people to get to the end, but each clue unlocks another clue. And there's this interesting component where they're sort of educating you as to who Cicada 3301 is and their worldview as you go uh, via the clues. So um, it, it, it captured a lot of uh, brilliant minds by storm. And, um, and I, I was just fascinated with, with, with the puzzle and the fact that it it eventually took people off the computer and into the real world when GPS coordinates in about 12 different countries all at the same time were released. Um, and it just felt like something so much bigger than, um, you know, like a recruitment came to the NSA or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, it just, it just seemed like an interesting foundation for a film and for, for a fun original adventure. And that's, that's, that's where it began. I, I did. I did take part in some of the puzzles after the fact. You know, I, let me see if I can figure it out. Knowing that I can look, I can cheat and like look at the answer. You know, um, but it's uh, it's a little too sophisticated for me. <laughs> Same here. Uh, I'm not smart enough either. <laughs> if my memory serves me right, though, the the third puzzle was never solved. And so, in constructing this narrative for this film. What did you and Joshua do to fill in those blanks? And talk to me about collaborating with Joshua on the script. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I kind of laid the groundwork with the script, but it was a much more dramatic kind of action film. And um, I, I, he's, he's, I love, I love working with him. He's brilliant, and he can add a lot of fun to a script. Um, he, he can come up with some really bizarre stuff, and did, and it helped the film tremendously. I think. Um, so you know, I, I sort of had the cicada of it all figured out, and just wanted a way to help. Like we, we, we hash out a way to kind of make it more fun together. Um, you know, because I think, I think what's important is not everybody wants to read about this or watch a film about this. Um, what, what's compelling about this for most people that just want to escape, you know, to, to a fun film. And I think um, this unreliable narrative that device that we have um, through Connor Black and, um, you know, the, the dynamo that we have in Gwen played by Connor Leslie and, um, you know, the, the fun friend that's sort of relatable and um, uh, brilliant in Ron Funch's character, Abby. I think we have this, we, we would call it like the three musketeer um, energy on set, you know, where we've got this, this trio that, that uh, is a lot of fun um, to, to take us down these, these many rabbit holes. Um, so to me, it's not a film um, necessarily about Cicada 3301 as much as, it, as, as it's, a, it's an adventure and, and a comedy that we can escape to. Hi, Connor. Uh, I'm such a huge fan of yours. I'm geeking out right now. <laughs> the, oh, the, man in, the man in the high castle, Titans. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, so, wow, you all of it. <laughs> and so you've worked with uh, several directors over the years. Uh, in your honest opinion, how was Alan as your first time film director on Dark Web said? Was being directed by Alan uh, similar or different compared to acting alongside him? No, you know what's actually really great is Alan and I didn't work a lot together in season one of Titans. So oh. I feel, I felt at least, um, we did, but it was towards the end because I don't show up till the end of season one um, in Titans. And so when I got back up to Toronto, I think it was like a week after I'd left Toronto where we filmed uh, Titans as well as this. And uh, my, my, I feel like my first work relationship with Alan was actually on this um, as a director. So that was my first impersonation and he knew exactly what he wanted to do with this. And I think it did help, even though he said it's a lot, he did juggle and navigate producing and writing and directing and acting in it much better than he's giving himself credit for. And so I really enjoyed it. And I think what's nice is um, working, having your director know so much about 
the project that you're on um, is always really helpful. So he knew so much about this world and this script and it was a breeze, it was a blast. I think he should direct more. Yes, I agree. And uh... oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. It was, it was, so it was fun because by the time we showed up for season two, I had kind of known him more from this um, before we went back to work on Titans. And so it was really interesting because it really wasn't the same work dynamic we now have when we started filming Cicada. What is it about Gwen that's unique or stands out? Um, you know, what separates Gwen from uh, Donna, Trudy, and Sabine, for example? Oh my God, you've watched Carmen <laughs> too. Um, I think, uh, you know, I've said this before, Gwen is really strong in a way that's like, she's not really self-advertising it. Um, she very clearly has a one-pointed um, idea of thinking of her mission and what she's going to accomplish and how to get it done. She doesn't really take any crap from anybody. Um, and she's quick. I loved how fast she was and how quick she was to respond to both these guys that she's on this adventure with. I mean, she's the one chick in this, you know, dude duo and she doesn't waver or sway from what she knows she has to get done. And so I really liked that about her. I liked that she was choosing very clearly because she is very smart, um, definitely smarter than I am because I can't solve a puzzle unless it's a jigsaw one to save me. And you see very quickly that she can um, go toe to toe with Connor Black and that she's just as smart as him and she's quick at solving these puzzles. And so I just liked how um, smart she was in a different way and how that also made her incredibly strong um, and that she kind of knows a bit more about this world than even the two of them at certain points. So I really liked all of that. and. I just loved the ad. I don't know whose idea it was, but like to just make her a librarian. I just <laughs> thought that was such a, a specific choice. Like she's clearly making that decision, right? She's She could do anything. Um, and she's chosen a job where no one's gonna bother her. Cause like, I think that kind of tracks throughout, like she doesn't want to be bothered. She just wants to get what she has to get done. So um, all of that combined kind of just made her a really fascinating woman um, to play. Yeah, the librarian thing was, was, was Moncom, I think. He's a, he's a book nerd and, uh, and I think that was the perfect setting um, for, for this character. But I, would, I just want to add too, I think one thing that was really important to me to, to us was um, that we we not create like a hypersexualized character in the female protagonist. And I think in every you know the action adventure, you know the, the the female is there to serve some sort of like sexual subconscious sexual fantasy for for men. And I think it was really important to us to 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 depict a, a woman simply for the how interesting it is to have a, a brilliant mind i mean she has a, a brilliant mind and connor really does um and some some women that that we've worked with um you know have a hard time letting go of that sexualized persona because it's sort of uh i mean it's almost like a survival mechanism you know mm -hmm. um and connor's so raw and real and natural and doesn't really comport herself in that way that um, I think that's what makes Gwen so interesting is that she, she's a very real person and we're not putting on something um, to try and sell, sell, you know, to sell papers. It's like, she's got a brilliant mind and she's just happens to be beautiful, you know, but that's not at all the focus. And, uh, and I think it makes this, this uh, female protagonist what, one of the more interesting ones that I've seen on screen. I got to ask about the humor on this film. It cracks me up. Uh, the sexual... <laughs> the fantasies that Connor imagined about the agents chasing him. At one point, you guys had to wear like BDSM outfit. Like uh, how many of those fantasy scenarios that you and Joshua cooked up and were there ones that didn't make it into the movie that we could probably see maybe in the bonus features or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the person I hypersexualize is myself, um, <laughs> which is why I was naked most of the time. Uh, no, um, yeah, I, I think I think we had an opportunity through this. You know, the, the story is told through the perspective of, of uh, Connor Black, hmm. and uh, he's he's essentially in custody, recounting what happened. And he's not he he's kind of he's he's always one step ahead of everybody, so he's not entirely honest. 
And the movie just continues varying in these really bizarre sequences. And you're not sure if what you're seeing is real or not. And I think that's a lot of fun. But if we're going to do that, we've got to really do that. So um, so there was a stripping down of our characters, as it were. Um, and I think it made it a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, I want people to enjoy um, seeing a movie. And, uh, you know, if it's at my expense, then so be it, you know. Um, <laughs> but we had a lot of fun with it. Um, most of that kind of stuff made it in the film just because it was sort of so big and fun that we just had to find a way to keep it in. Um, but uh, but there's a lot of yeah there's a there's a lot on the cutting room floor that should stay there forever and I'm not gonna argue with that. All right, I'm gonna tell everybody to go watch this, especially because it has that Indiana Jones sense to it, which I love. And but you know my fans are gonna be angry at me if I don't ask you at least this one final question. Can you give us a hint or a tease on what we can anticipate from Titan season three? Just bird's eye view tease. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, action stuff. <laughs> yes, super <laughs> suits. Are involved. Super um, suits. There are villains involved. There's um, a fight or two. Yeah, there's a couple of fights and yeah. um, lots of DC related topics. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. I'm just giving That's it all it. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a that's all within the premises of the NDA. I get you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, for my fans at home, everybody go check out Dark Web Cicada 3301 arriving March 12th on digital and on demand and on Blu-ray DVD March 16th. Connor and Alan, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thanks so much, Rama. Thanks, I appreciate it.